Hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. So today, as per normal, I'll be talking about Stormtroopers. If you're interested in building a Stormtrooper replica from A New Hope or a high quality copy, this is worth sticking around for. So I wanted to take a few moments to talk about some of the really iconic features that make a Stormtrooper, specifically a stunt Stormtrooper from A New Hope. If you know a bit about your Stormtroopers, there were 50 stunt troopers made for the film, the ones used by most of the stunt actors, and there were six helmets made as hero helmets for close-up shots. They're very different. Uh, there's loads of really good information about this all over the net. Um, but as I say, there were two different types of helmet. Most people make a replica of a stunt helmet. It's the most common helmet. Now, if you love that opening scene in Star Wars where the stormtroopers burst through the doors, then what I'm going to talk about today is probably really interesting to you. And what I'm going to say will give you that opportunity to make a stormtrooper helmet that has that real essence of that opening scene as they all flood in through those doors. So let's carry on and start from the top of the helmet. So firstly to say, again, this will be mostly based on the stunt variant of the helmet and anything that I mention here, I'll fully support with photos. This is all based on the majority of helmets. We all know that Star Wars and New Hope had loads of anomalies. The trooper with no stripes on the side of his cheeks, Mr. No Stripes. There's troopers where the brow trim's fallen down, troopers with the shins on the wrong legs, some without holsters, some with this, some with that. There's loads of anomalies, but if you look through the film, you'll see that of the 50 stunt troopers, there are a lot of very common features, and that's what we're going to look at now. So, as I say, we'll start from the top of the helmet and work the way down. So the first thing to talk about is the brow trim and the height of the brow. It's all about how you construct the helmet for a start and it's also then how you position the two parts so if i show you with a helmet here this is an rs prop masters helmet which is molded from an original helmet so it's pretty much as close as you can get to an original helmet now if you build this if you align the face plate and this part the back and cap if you align them as it's intended then you do get a natural gap here between the brow which is this rubber trim, and then above the eye sockets. So there is a, an obvious and very defined gap between the brow trim and above the eye socket. If you choose to, you can align it differently, force it down and go for that appearance, which some people do like, fair play. But if you're actually looking to make a replica helmet based on the majority of stunt helmets seen in Star Wars A New Hope, then you would build it correctly so that you get a nice alignment of the faceplate. With that, you'll find a lot of the time this line on the back of the helmet, if you were to run an imaginary line across, that runs just above the eyes. Really easy to align that straight across just above the eyes and then you get that natural gap where the brow actually raises up slightly. Again all of that um, you'll see the photos coming up now. I'd say a good 95% of the stunt helmets within the uh, A New Hope within Star Wars A New Hope have that very natural gap. That's actually apparent for some of the hero helmets too. So Luke has a little bit of a lower brow but it still has a small gap if you look at Han's helmet, which is a hero helmet, again, it has a very clear defined gap. So again, if you're looking to create a replica helmet, like the troopers that come in at the beginning of A New Hope, on the Death Star, for example, or on the Blockade Runner, then you would go for that sort of gap here. So next up would be the ears. There's loads of reference photos which you'll see and the ears are sometimes when people build them they build the ears a bit thick they don't trim them down as much and that's fair play when you get your first helmet kit you're a bit nervous about how far you should cut you don't want to overcut and ruin it 
but a lot of the big helmet manufacturers out there, or helmet makers, should I say, they're not manufacturers, helmet makers, a lot of them now supply two pairs of the ear caps. So what I might suggest is that try it with one set. Look at your reference photos, which can be found on, for example, StarWarsHelmets.com or White Armour, which is the uh, first Imperial Stormtrooper detachment. It's linked to the 501st, but you don't have to be a member. There's lots of resources there. Check out those images. Have a look at how thick the actual ears on a Stormtrooper are and see if you can aim for that look. If you build the ears too big, too thick, you don't trim them down enough, the helmet can look very wide and it throws the proportions out. That's a similar thing to when you mess about with the faceplate alignment to, to lower the brow. You can sometimes change the look of the helmet. From the side, it starts to look very long, uh, a bit more like a Return of the Jedi helmet. But if you sort of put it together correctly, you get some nice proportions to go with it as well. Don't worry if there's a few gaps around between the cheeks and such. Gaps are fine and they were common on screen. It's more about the thickness so your, your Stormtrooper helmet doesn't look too wide. So next up is the vocoder. So the vocoder, the little black area here sort of above the chin, looks like where the mouth might be. There's, I would say, three styles of vocoder in A New Hope. There's what I would call a fuller vocoder, which is common on most helmets throughout the film. A bit like this style behind you, but I will put proper reference photos up as well, of course. This is only one that I've built. So the fuller style is common on the majority of stunt helmets. Again, probably a good 90 something percent. It's found on quite a few of the hero helmets. And then there is a slight variation here and there. Obviously, all of these props were hand painted, so they all vary slightly. But there's a very different style, which I'll put on screen now. And that's on a hero helmet with a very thin, narrow section, uh, the Brazilian, as I like to call it. But there's one with a very thin vocoder section right down the middle. And uh, that is unusual. It's not that common. It's not that common! So again, if you're looking for an instantly recognisable helmet from, Storm from a Stormtrooper helmet from Star Wars, you would probably follow the majority of helmets on screen. That'll be, as I say, what I call the fuller vocoder. And that's where you'll find that bars two and six on the vocoder come up quite a lot higher. So again, if you're looking for that fresh off the set a &H Stormtrooper look, that would be my recommendation would be to go for a fuller vocoder paint. So we'll look next at the hovi tips, the mic tips on the front of the helmet. So if you're joining the 501st, for example, then there is a requirement that when you go for your clearance, you've got the rims of the hobby tips painted white. Um, personally, I'd say that's maybe a tad ambiguous. If you're looking at the screen reference photos, it would appear that the front of the rims on the hobby tips are slightly worn out. They're not actually necessarily painted white. It does look, uh, and as far as I'm aware, I think a lot of people believe this was true, the hobby tips were actually resin moulds. So they had an original part from something that they used uh, as their reference, and then they had some resin casts. Now, it's likely that they were quite a light colour, maybe you know, a lot of resins are sort of a yellowy white colour. Then the hobby tips would have been painted black, and it looks like, because they're all very different, it looks like they've just got naturally worn out over time. They've probably been put down on a desk, they've got some knocks and damage. So the black paint has actually worn away, so that's very different from taking a black object and painting the edge white. These were white objects, painted black, and then the black's gently worn away. So what I would recommend is that you take your hobby tips. If they're white or sort of a very light yellowy colour, then just paint the outside black, leave the inside white, which is correct for a stunt stormtrooper, and then just gently weather the edges, weather the rims of the hobby tips. So don't just get white paint and dab it on. If you've got a, a light coloured surface underneath your black paint, just use some gentle sandpaper or something similar and give it that naturally weathered look. Personally, as I say, I wouldn't want to just get white paint and put it round. Um, sometimes I've seen some troopers try that, trying to meet the rules, and that's fine. But they look a bit like the American tyres when you've got the big white rim on them. It looks very obvious and very processed. So again, for me, I would take your sort of white or yellowy coloured um, resin hobby tips, paint the outside black, and then just gently weather the rim of that hobby tip. 
So another area that I would add in from the original screen used props is the angular nature of the eye sockets. I've covered this in a few other videos as well, but I think the natural temptation is to cut the eye sockets out and then get a Dremel or some sandpaper, really smooth everything off, nice round edges, that sort of thing. When you actually look at the screen used helmets, and again, I'll put some on screen now for you, they had very angular uh, cuts, basically. They were cut with a sharp blade of some sort, it looks like anyway. Uh, so when you look in the corners, for example, top left and top right corners of the eyes, they are very sharp. You'll then see how the lines actually sort of follow down in quite angular motions. So if you want to get, again, that proper A&H feel to it, like it's just come off the set, then looking at the way that you cut the eye sockets is going to be another factor to add in there. A final thing I would look at is if you're going for a true replica of a stunt helmet, the original helmets were painted white, so there's a very different texture to it. The Hero helmets were ABS, they were white plastic, so of course that's how they're supposed to look. If you're after a real replica helmet, I would very much recommend going for a full paint job because you get such a different look to it. The helmet behind me here is fully resprayed, so it is actually a white ABS helmet, but it's got a sort of khaki cream, cream undercoat, and then it's got the white spray paint over the top of that, and it's naturally weathered to make it look much more like a screen used helmet. So if you're after a true replica, more likely for collection, if you're gonna keep it on display, although this one here is one that I've already trooped, then you would go for that fully spray painted look. It's hard to describe it unless you've seen one in the flesh, but when you actually see the texture on it and just the way it holds itself, it looks so much more like a screen used helmet. Uh, it just really does look great. So again, if you're after a sort of really high end or a more true to the screen replica, I definitely recommend you look into spray painting the whole helmet, hand painting the rest of it, and trust me, you then get a really stunning piece to keep, uh, well, as long as you can. So there we go, just a few pointers. I hope that's been helpful. As I say, that's really for those that are aiming for the real sort of replica level. And those are just a few things that to me, when you look at those reference photos, you look at the vast majority of the stunt stormtroopers seen in the Star Wars A New Hope, you'll then see that all these things I've mentioned, those are the most sort of common and iconic features of the Stormtrooper helmet. So again, as I say, I hope that's been useful. If you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Take care.